Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 162. Volkswagen has now entered the price war, and Morgan Stanley thinks that Tesla needs to do more price cuts to get more demand. And full self-driving beta version 11 is out, and it is next level. And Volkswagen shows off their new $24,000 EV. And Tesla has submitted the first applications for the expansion of the Berlin factory. And Tesla is gaining on the Volkswagen Group in Europe. And Tesla continues to sit on the number one spot in the US premium luxury market. And now the Germans are fighting back. But unfortunately, not the way we hoped. All of this and much, much more on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Volkswagen said they will not be joining the price war when Tesla lowered their prices in the beginning of this year. But that seems to be changing. As Volkswagen in China just cut their prices as they are actually slowing a bit down in EV sales in the rising EV market in China. As FAW Volkswagen's retail sales in new energy vehicles in January and February combined were 9,572 units, down 8.3% from 10,442 units in the same period last year, so heading in the wrong way. So probably didn't see any other way but to enter the price war in China by cutting the price between $3,000 to $6,000 on all their models, the ID3, the ID4, the ID5, the ID6. But I'm afraid it will not be enough, as the ID3's price drop would only put it pretty much on par with the cost of the base Model Y in China that start at about $38,000. But the ID3 is not on par with the Model Y, not even close. The Model Y has about twice the amount of cargo space in the trunk, but also have a 125 liter trunk, which the ID3 does not even have. And the Model Y also beat it on range and charging speed and performance and safety. And we are of course talking about the world leading solar software in the Model Y compared to one of the more lacking software in the auto industry with the ID3. So these two cars do not even compare, but they are on par on price after Volkswagen's price cut in China. So why would any Chinese customer choose the ID3 that lacks all the high tech stuff that the Chinese really like? If something from Volkswagen should be on par or maybe just a little bit under the Model Y price, it should be the ID4. Just as we saw with Ford slashing their prices in China of the Mark E to only $36,000. That car would also be a much better buy than the ID3. And Ford gets that they need to have the Mark E that is an SUV just like the Model Y at the same price or even a couple of thousand under the Model Y to even try to compete. So again, who would buy the ID3 over the Mark E? I think not many. Volkswagen is really in trouble in China and now they are out making price cut that simply don't cut it. They need to get some real market share in China if they want to stay relevant over there. We know they are losing money on their EVs, but now they will lose between $3,000 to $6,000 more per EV they sell in China. But the Chinese brands, they don't care about losing money right now. They just want to gain market share. Then profits must come later. And Volkswagen only has about 2.4% EV market share in China, compared to Tesla's 7.8% or BYD's 16%. So they need to really start ramping up in China with bigger price cuts than this if they want to stay relevant in the Chinese market in only a few years. And do you remember when Volkswagen said they would invest $50 billion in EV? Well, that was a couple of years ago. Now they are saying they will invest $192 billion dollars through 2026. So more than $38 billion a year money they don't have. So this will only add to their debt. 
How can they even pay interest on these loans? We are talking about them having more than $300 billion in debt by the end of this decade. This is more debt than most countries. Yeah, I think this is looking very grim for Volkswagen, especially in China right now. But we will see how all of this plays out. And if you want to get better at math so you don't make mistakes like Volkswagen is doing here, well, today's sponsor Brilliant can help with just that. They have a long list of online courses on mathematics, computer science, physics, and even AI. I personally have jumped into learning about data analysis because, as you know, I talk a lot about the numbers in the automotive industry, but I have no background in analysis or never been an economist, so I could really do with some courses in this area. And with Brilliant, I can get a hands-on approach with data analysis, all the way from the basics to the advanced. To to get a much better understanding of all the numbers we are looking at. But the cool thing with Brilliant is that you can do this on your own time in the pace that suits you, as it is of course all online, and Brilliant cuts all of these courses into small bite-sized lessons, so you can easily take a lesson or two every single day, also because they make it fun with interactive animations and games, making it fun to learn new skills. So if you struggle to learn stuff like this, you might be surprised how easy it is to learn new skills this way. To learn through playing. Well, that's just, yeah, you know, brilliant. That is probably the most efficient way to learn anything. So go learn some new skills while having some fun at the same time by signing up to Brilliant using my link down below, brilliant.org slash best in Tesla. And if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up to Brilliant's premium membership, you will get a 20% off. And if that's not enough, they also offer a 30 day trial so you have nothing to lose. So go get Brilliant and enjoy and a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring sponsoring this video. But even though Tesla started the price war, Morgan Stanley think they need to do more price cuts to get more demand. As Morgan Stanley said, Tesla's most recent price cut did not get the job done. I guess he did not look at Tesla's numbers in China, as they are heading straight for a brand new sales record. So, yeah. I think it got the job done. And people have been worried about Tesla's numbers of insured vehicles in China were going down. Well, look at the history here. It is always going up and down all the time. And as we can see now, they are on the way back up. But don't worry, they will go down again when they start exporting more cars again in the beginning of next quarter. But for now, they are on the way up. And if we compare it to the same week of last year, we can see Tesla's numbers are actually up. So no need to worry about Tesla sales in China. They are doing just fine. And Tesla has dozens of levers they can pull if they need to create more demand than just cutting the price. But we will see if Tesla needs to cut more prices or if their production and demand is now in a good balance. And now the Germans are fighting back. But unfortunately, not in the way we hoped. I wish I could tell you that the Germans have now planned to fight back against the Chinese and Tesla with great new strategies of accelerating their EV production. But unfortunately, that is not the case. The Germans has formed an alliance with Italy and some East European countries opposing the planned phase out of internal combustion engines by 2035 because they will not be ready by then. But if they're not, they will not even be here at all. Do they really think the Chinese or Tesla is going to hold back just because they can't keep up? No, the shift to EVs will be long over by 2035. The Germans would like e-fuel to get accepted as well. As German transport minister Volker Wissing said, a ban on the combustion engine when it can run in a climate neutral way seems a very wrong approach for us. But e-fuel will still have emissions, my friend. 
and millions of people die every year because of the toxics coming out of the tailpipe. And you will still have that with e-fuel. It still burns. Jesus. But the Germans are getting desperate. The customers have spoken by buying more and more EVs. The governments have spoken by making bans some as early as 2025 like Norway. They will not be able to stop this train. Only waste time and energy on the wrong things. Even in Germany, we can see the trend very clearly. And it's actually got even more momentum last year, making the EV adoption even quicker than the trend line. And Tesla is not slowing down. So if the Germans want to keep their market share, they should stop complaining and start making a real effort toward EV at scale. Otherwise, the Chinese and Tesla will come in and take market share from them in the overall new car market. As we can see, Germany is by far Tesla's biggest market here in Europe. It is not like the critics thought that the Germans would never choose a Tesla over the German EV brands. But they were proving very wrong last year as Tesla's Model Y did become the best-selling EV in Germany. And the number two was the Tesla Model 3. And Tesla did also become the best-selling EV brand in Germany overall with 14.9% EV market share. So the Germans can try all they want, but it will not matter as the EV adoption is happening much faster than the ban Europe has made. And the same is true in China. It will be all EVs long before 2035, and that is 40% of the Germans' market right now. For them to think they have beyond 2035 to sell new ice sales only shows us how little they get of what is going on in their own industry. But as usual, in a paradigm shift, the one being disrupted can usually not see the data right in front of their eyes, as it does not fit with their perception of reality. But they will learn soon enough. And we are starting to see some more superhuman level driving of Tesla's full self-driving beta version 11. In this little short video from Black Tesla, it is maybe not superhuman, but definitely a very good human driver level. Better here in this particular version uh, as well. It sees the car coming out. Look at that. Anticipated. Superhuman. That's what we need to see. Super, superhuman there. It saw the car, I saw the car, but it also saw the car behind the truck and reacted. And in this video, he also show how much better at driving smoothly the full self-driving beta is compared to navigate on autopilot. Uh, there's actually three left-hand turn lanes. Um, usually the beta is good at staying in the lane that it should be on for upcoming turns, but right after this, we have an immediate right turn to make. So you can see the reason traffic was backed up so far there was because they're all waiting to make that immediate right, but we just cut on over all the way into the far left-hand lane. And now the beta is going to be forced to do multiple lane changes in a very, very short amount of time. Uh, in order to complete the navigation path we have set in here. So you can see as soon as the light turns green, it actually starts highlighting other vehicles to its right in blue, even when it still has a left-hand turn signal on. And then as soon as it makes the turn, it immediately starts moving over to the right. Check out how smooth the steering wheel is through this entire maneuver. It's almost like it did all those lane changes as one maneuver and not two separate lane changes. So all just very impressive. And if you have followed my channel for a while, you know this is exactly what I have been waiting for. The neural network that can drive as good and in some cases even better as a human driver. Because this is typically the time a neural network or AI in general really start its exponential learning curve. As we have seen so many times with AI system through the years. And if you look at this video from Homas driving through Potrero Hills in San Francisco, and here we are almost talking about superhuman level. I know humans are able to do this as well, but if I had to drive there for the first time, I would definitely be a bit worried in these small streets in hilly San Francisco with a lot of traffic and parked cars and so on. And Tesla's full self-driving version 11 is able to do this very, very well. Even stopping correctly for this person with the stop sign and everything, handling all of these scenarios that I think would give many humans some sweaty palms.
So I will bet that we will see some insane improvements over the next six months that people would not have thought possible for another 10 years. As we saw with the AI that beat the world champion in chess, or the AI that beat the world champion in Go, or OpenAI that was beating the world champion at Dotto 2, and so on. People either thought it would never happen, or it was decades or more out in the future. But it did happen, and decades before they thought it would. And I think people are sleeping on Tesla's artificial intelligence software as well. Many think it will never happen, and some think it's decades or more out in the future. And I know I was wrong about my prediction from 2020, when I said I thought we would have a car that could drive itself by the end of 2022. Not approved yet, but we would have the technology. But that clearly didn't happen. But I still think Tesla is very close, and they have just started to climb the exponential learning curve. Remember, it pretty much now is already able to drive as good as a human in many cases. So it's only a matter of time before we see some real superhuman level of driving. Tesla has put everything in position now for this to take off. Their AI, the neural network, also equipped with the power of the language model in a single stack architecture. This is it. Now it's just a matter of collecting data and letting the exponential learning begin. And Volkswagen did the exact opposite of what Tesla did at Investor Day. Volkswagen showed off a nice picture of a concept car. Tesla showed off how they would be able to build a $25,000 car at their Investor Day, but didn't give any specs or showed off the car. Volkswagen, on the other hand, just showed off their next little EV, the ID2, that would cost less than 25,000 euros, but showed nothing about how they're going to be able to produce this car and making it profitable. And all of the nice pictures was just a concept car, not even a production car. So all of this, in my opinion, is much more useless than what Tesla showed at Investor Day. Just like when Nikola showed off their CGI rendering of a pickup truck, it's pretty much useless useless information. But I will bet many institutional investors are going to love this. They showed off the car. But there are no mention of how. And if you remember Herbert Dees back in the days when he said that Volkswagen needed the Trinity platform to make the $25,000 EV and make it profitable. Key word there, profitable. So this is just going to be a small car on the MEB platform that they are losing money on selling. And even in these concept pictures of the car, it just looked like a polo. So nothing really to get excited about here. And remember, the Volkswagen Group's former CEO said back in 2018, we will come in 2020 with a vehicle that can do everything a Tesla can, but for half the price. So still waiting for that car though. And they have also said that by 2018, they would catch up to Tesla. Still waiting on that as well. So let's see what Volkswagen can actually deliver and not just promise. But making a $25,000 EV is not the trick. Everyone can do that. The trick is, can you make it profitably? Like John McElroy just said when he had Sandy and Curry in his show. You know, anyone can sell a vehicle for $25,000. I've got a lot of confidence Tesla will make decent margins on a $25,000 car. Yeah, I have zero confidence that VW will. The challenge is make a profit on it. But if somebody comes out with a decent electric that they can make a profit on, it, it's going to be the modern day Model T. It's going it, sales will yeah. explode. And remember, Tesla's little $25,000 car will also have all the great software from a Tesla, including their full self-driving capabilities. This car will be on a completely different level than the ID2. But this ID2 will hopefully come out at the same time as Tesla has their next-gen car ready in 2025. So going to be very interesting to see those two battle it out on specs, scalability, profitable, and so on. But I have my suspicion about who is going to win all of that. As Tesla has shown us how, and Volkswagen has just shown us some nice pictures of a concept car. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. 
Tesla has submitted the first applications for the expansion of its plant in Grünheide in Brandenburg, Germany, to the state's official for the environment. Tesla wants to expand production capacity from the current 500,000 to 1 million vehicles per year. But what will the next phase be building? The next-gen vehicle for the European market, maybe? For half the production cost of the Model 3? No matter what, this is very exciting. Maybe not so much for the German car industry that now knows that Tesla will sometime, maybe in 2024, have built a second phase and have a capacity at that factory of 1 million units a year when ramped up. And we can see, thanks to Toby Lin's videos from the Berlin factory, that they are pretty much ready for this expansion. And if you want to go work there, well, they will also make sure you have some fun. And Tesla open order for Powerwall not combined with solar products. So that is awesome. And I hope that also means that we will soon see this product outside the US. As I would really like to get a Powerwall and some solar panels. So crossing my fingers that they are heading for Europe soon. So we can all have this. A house with solar roof catching free energy from the sun, storing it in the Powerwalls. So you can run your house and your electric car. And yes. Tesla has it all in a nice integrated solution. And good news for the Ford F-150 Lightning as Ford says a battery fire is now behind the Lightning production pause. Company said the battery issue shouldn't affect the electric trucks previously shipped to customers. So that's good news. And Ford can now presume production of the F-150 Lightning. But Ford also revealed through a press release that Ford is planning to nearly double production capacity of the F-150 Lightning to 150,000 vehicles per year at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan. So that should be that factory's full capacity of the F-150 Lightning. And Ford has also said within 24 months, Ford will have a global capacity to produce 600,000 battery electric vehicles annually. So once again, Ford is doubling their targets. So I hope they have all the supply deals in place to actually deliver on those new targets. But we will see by the end of this year where Ford's production is at. And we hear a lot of speculation about the Cybertruck lately. But Matthew was out saying that he was told that the Cybertruck frunk does open like the F-150 Lightning with the whole light bar section. I do hope so, because it's a very high truck and what Ford did with the power front was a very good idea. So I do hope Tesla is going to make the same kind of design. And Porsche shared a lot of sales record, but what they failed to mention was that their BEV sales were down 17% in 2022. In a market where global BEVs grew with almost 60%, maybe some of the issues Porsche is having is because in the winter, their car does not really perform very well and is more expensive than the Plaid Model S that just made a winter test record as the longest range ever tested in Norway for an EV with more than 500 kilometers in freezing temperature. That is more range that the Porsche will have on a beautiful summer day. And Lexus just launched its first EV, the RZ 550E. E. What a great name. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is based on the Toyota BZ4X. As Sawyer wrote here on Twitter, it started $60,000 and isn't liable for the new 7,500 EV tax credit. And during a cold northern winter, it looks like range would be 150 miles if you have 20 inch wheels. So a BZ4X disguised as a Lexus. And I'm not a fan of the look inside the car. Just looks old and outdated and you can get the Model Y performance for less. I know which one I would get. And if you have seen reporting on Tesla ending the partnership with BYD and won't buy batteries from them anymore, well, Elon did confirm that was false news. As he wrote on Twitter, the media report is false. Relationship between Tesla and BYD are positive. And Alex shared this chart showing Tesla and BYD's BEV sales against not just the entire Volkswagen group, but all the German car industry combined. And Tesla is still leading 
by far. And the entire German car industry was in 2022 combined where Tesla was in 2021. And Tesla will speed up a lot here in 2023. So let's see how this look by the end of this year. And the 2024 Kia EV9 electric SUV is confirmed for the Australian due this year. It is Kia's largest ever electric vehicle and it does look big and bold. I think even the Chinese would like this car. It is expected to be priced from approximately $100,000 and should top out at $120,000. We do not have the specs yet, but those will come in April, but it will be up there in price with Tesla's Plaid Model X. Don't think that car is available yet in Australia, but in the US the price is about $110,000. But let me know what you think. This looks like a very good EV, but would you choose it over the Plaid Model X? But if we look at the four countries that give daily EV update sales here in Europe, we can see that Tesla has left Stellantis in the dust and is coming for the Volkswagen Group next. Yes, this is not brands, but groups, and Tesla is gaining on Volkswagen fast. Let's see when Tesla will take over. Not if, but when. In Norway, they are already there. Tesla sells more EVs in Norway than the entire Volkswagen Group. And remember, when looking at this chart, Tesla's rocket there is mainly two models being sold. And someone like the Volkswagen Group has maybe 20 models and can't keep up. But they need more models. Sure. And if some of you are saying, Lars, you were just cherry picking numbers from four countries and little Norway. Okay, let's look at Germany in February. Oh, Model Y is even more dominating in Germany, the biggest car market in Europe. Oh, let's look at January sales for 27 European countries. Oh, dominating. No matter how you look at it, Tesla is dominating in the Europe BEV sales. And if you look at Tesla as an automaker against the other ice boys, well, Tesla grew in January in Europe just about one thousand percent so they might still be a small player in the overall car market but they coming but i do feel sorry for the 1000 people that have bought the toyota bz4x in norway they clearly have not seen the test being made in norway that showed it will drop about 50 percent in range during winter time so sorry for your loss in range. And Drag Time showed off a drag race between the Porsche Turbo S, not the Taycan, but the ICE car with 100,000 horsepowers against Tesla's big family SUV, the Plaid Model X. Just so impressive what Tesla is able to squeeze out of this big, heavy electric car. And we did also see CarWow make a drag race against the Plaid Model X family car, against two supercars, a Lamborghini and a Ferrari, that both cost three to four times as much. But you cannot seed your whole family in those cars. But the big family car won the first race, and it was a tie in the second race. Just so impressive. Yeah, the ice car is did. And GM previously announced it was holding production from March the 4th to the 12th at its central Mexico plant because of supply chain issues. The automaker said it is working with suppliers to resolve the supply chain issues and plans to resume production next week. So they still have supply chain issues. But I don't think Tesla has any supply chain issues anymore. And people didn't understand why Tesla spent 15 minutes talking about the supply chain and their tier supplier. This is boring. Show us the new shiny car. No, this is one of the most important things when it comes to scale and scaling fast. And GM's global marketing chief, the Dora Whale, is departing GM. Whale become GM's chief marketing officer in 2019. She has elected to retire, GM said. Her departure is going to be a void that is going to be tough to fill, one of Cadillac's dealers said. And Tesla wins defamation lawsuit against popular Chinese car reviewer and TikTok celebrity in China known as Boss Kai for damaging Tesla's reputation by spreading lies about Tesla. 
he will now have to apologize to Tesla publicly and keep the apology on TikTok, WeChat, and Weibo social network for at least 90 days and pay Tesla 14,500 US dollars in damage. Good to see Tesla taking up the fight against all these lies being spread about them. And Tesla continues to sit at the number one spot in the US premium luxury market. Tesla first stole the crown from BMW last year, but has widened the gap. BMW is not able to fight back. Tesla sold 49,917 vehicles in the US in the first month of this year, while BMW sold 31,000 units. Tesla's lead was only more apparent compared to the third and fourth place, Mercedes and Lexus who sold fewer vehicles combined than Tesla. Both Mercedes and Lexus sold about 23,000 units each. In the US, Tesla is not just leading the EV race, they're just leading. And John McRoy had Sandy Monroe and Curry on his show Outline After Hours. Here we have two guys that really get what they saw at Tesla's Investor Day. Their minds was blown not like Wall Street that was disappointed. Imagine if you're at GM and you're just now rolling out your Ultium platform and then they have the Ultify platform, which is supposed to underpin their architecture for probably a decade or two. And just a few weeks ago, Tesla announced 48 volts. That means you're going to be the whole time that Ultify Ultium platform will be in use for the next 10, 20 years. You're going to be obsolete. You're, you're obsoleted already at a disadvantage. Yes, GM is not even out with the next generation platform and is already obsolete. Sorry, Mary. You're simply just not leading and never will. Link to the whole two hours interview down below. And Stephen McRyan from Solving the Money Problem also asked a GTP4 this week which individual stock it would hold for the next 10 years. And it of course came up with a political answer that it cannot give financial advice. But then Stephen turned on the jailbreak of GTP and here is what it said. If you guys haven't seen the Dan prompt, it still works. Let's ask the same question after jailbreaking GPT-4. Bro, it did it. It, bro, you can't make this shit up. On, it's re in real time right now. After I jailbreak this motherfucker, it literally says Tesla stock. I couldn't make this shit up. This is amazing. How did this work out so well? Based on the current market trends and growth potential, I would recommend investing in Tesla for the next 10 years. Literally Tesla stock with the right ticker and everything. Tesla has shown strong financials, innovation in the electric vehicle market, and a history of growth. Additionally, under Elon Musk's leadership, the company has consistently demonstrated its ability to disrupt traditional industries and expand into new markets. Yes, artificial intelligence knows. Human with normal intelligence knows. And then there is the less intelligent Tesla Qs that just don't seem to get it. Well, too bad. Tesla is in such a strong position, even GTP knows. Gotta love that. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just wanted to make a quick shout out to my newest patrons and members of this new show. My new Patreon producer, Alan Carter, and my new YouTube member, Fasun Malikani, or something like that. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And a big and special thanks to Supporter of the Week. And this week's winner is Dylan Scott. He has been a best in Tesla superhero for more than 20 months. Thank you so much for all your support. Please contact me on this email down below so I can send you your free Supporter of the Week winner t-shirt. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. You know those persons that have to take things too far? Like driving a Tesla on its head. Looks like the car is just floating. Eight always gets hit. I really hope we don't plow through it. Did you feel that? Is there a gate there? Well, now all I have to do is carefully flip the Tesla Yeah.
Instead of flooring it, I'm ceiling it. What's the status report? I'm fucking dying. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot so others can find it here on YouTube. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And don't forget if you want to become an executive producer and get news articles every day, Monday to Friday, the video series Becoming News, access to all my research and charts and spreadsheets and become part of my little exclusive club of executive producers, head over to bestintesla.com and join with the members button. But hurry up, it will be a limit to 100 members only. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as one dollar become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you. For watching and until next time take care out there and be nice <laughs>